question we always get is how much does an addition cost? And I'm gonna give you some secrets here, some, some rules of thumb to work off of. But keep in mind these rules that I've already told you. We wanna start from vague and go to specific. This isn't something you can click on Amazon for. It's something you're going to be generating and you don't even know, I don't know, you don't know. None of us know yet, but we at least need some parameters to start with. And there's two ways I go about that. The first, you'll be really used to, and that's square footage. Everyone is used to figuring out how much something costs by square footage. All right, and you're right, at the beginning of a process when we're just starting out, this is about the best way to figure it out. Now, I'm gonna cheat a little bit, I'm gonna give you a politician's answer because my answer is gonna be so wide that it'll be hard to do anything with, but at least it helps. The good rule of thumb on square footage for an addition meaning uh, something that expands the footprint of the house is somewhere between $100, $135 a square foot and $250 a square foot. And I know what you're saying. <laughs> That's huge, right? That's like saying how much does a car cost? Uh, it could cost $13,000, it could cost $100,000. But if you shop for a car, you know that actually is about the spread of a new car. So this is a good place to start. Uh, last year, as an illustration, we did two fairly good-sized projects very close to each other on similar houses. One of them ended up being right at $135 a square foot. The other ended up being over $300 a square foot. Both clients extremely happy with what they got, meaning they wanted something different and their value set when it came to those three items, budget, scope, and level of finish, were different. And the project then needed to be different. So that's a great place to start, and that will give you a good place. Almost every time we do a bid, it sits right in the middle of this after we're done with our first budget proposal. But this can be really limited, so we use something else, and I call this other method the bubble method. I know, I should get that copyrighted because it's such an awesome name. <laughs> what I mean by this is <clears throat> an addition usually is basically a collection of different smaller components or what we call bubbles if we're sketching it out on paper. Um, one of the bubbles being kitchen, for example. Um, one of them being bath. Um, and another one just being what I'd call raw square footage, meaning uh, bedrooms, um, halls, things like that, okay? Now, the easiest one to do is the kitchen and the bath. A kitchen, every time I do a kitchen, I usually tell the clients to budget between $40,000 and $100,000 for that kitchen, okay? If it's a modest kitchen that needs to have all the cabinets replaced, everything like that, we can hover around the bottom of this, but if it's going to be a good-sized kitchen, nicer cabinets, etc., you can definitely bump the top into that. Uh, on a bathroom, uh, you need to budget between $15,000 on the low end for like a modest hall bath up to $40,000 um, for a, a bigger bathroom that has more holes. So you can see, and then a raw square footage, again, a good way to think about it is maybe $10,000 per room is a good place to start. Again, very, very inaccurate, but you have to start somewhere. So. Let's say we have an addition and it's got a kitchen and it's got a bathroom and it's got a dining room and another room. So I've got a kitchen. Let's say we budget that at 60000 We have two bathrooms. So let's do 20 times 2, which is 40000 And let's say we got a couple other rooms. Um, and let's say we do that 10 a piece, so I'm going to go 20000 for that. Now you can see I've got a range of roughly 120000 for this project here. And that's probably a good place to start. And it'd be interesting then, so we find that number, and then we figure out what our square footage is up here, and we find this budget number up here, and those two numbers kind of point in the direction that the project will probably go. And again, that's a pretty good place to start. It's about as good as you get. And then as you get more information, again, you start moving from vague, which is what this is, to specific, meaning by the time you sign the contract, you know exactly what tile you're getting, you know how much everything is gonna cost, everything has been worked out. 
The project has been built on paper, as we say, and that's really the way you want to work the project.